Good morning. Uh, I'm going to share with you a very short uh, video that I did for last year's class on um, the issue of climate change and of uh, natural disasters and coastal disasters and so on. And uh, watch it. It's it's uh, outdated, so um, some of the, the the comments are not for this year. But the content is is very much for this year. And then I'll make another comment on the other side of it. Good morning. In uh, week seven, we are going to do what I think is sort of the cutting edge of concern about um, coastal zones and, and, and uh, the whole issue of coastal policy. And that is the discussion about uh, natural disasters and, and coastal uh, zone planning, management, the impact of disasters, uh, not only on the coastal zones, but um, here we're not biologists in this class necessarily, but we are as coastal uh, managers, coastal policy, um, students of coastal policy. And so the, the single greatest, I think, focus here becomes uh, infrastructure, populations on the coast, uh, issues of how to uh, avoid disaster, mitigate disaster, respond to disaster, and that includes, uh, of course, uh, primarily um, trying to um, the famous uh, Galveston hurricane is still the natural disaster in the United States that has caused the greatest number of human casualties, which is very hard to believe since it was a long time ago. We have tried to put together some readings for you here that um, encompass some of the more uh, interesting policy-oriented uh, concerns, and I hope you'll enjoy those. I wanted to say, um, because we are right now just a few days before the uh, climate change conference in, in Copenhagen um, that all of the sort of buzz and all of the politics of, um, of, of coastal climate and coastal uh, uh, policy concern revolves around the question of whether there is global warming or more precisely how much global warming there is, what the cause of global warming is, how far it will go, um, <coughs> will it go to the sort of maximum uh, in terms of uh, rises in sea level, for example, um, and whether there is some um, concern about what, what part of that is caused by human activity, what part of that is cyclical, and that all leaves the design of where posted on websites and those emails are very embarrassing because these climate scientists were essentially trying to squash evidence that contradicts uh, some of the commonly accepted uh, insights or uh, truisms about uh, global warming and so uh, it came at an incredibly bad time to try and put together uh, uh, international agreements on climate change. But you, you, you have to incorporate this into your own thinking um, you and I cannot simply say, well, here's the evidence, you know, the scientists have this to say, here's the evidence, here are the temperatures of the ocean rising and, and uh, ice caps melting and so on, and therefore uh, here's what we have to do in terms of changing how human beings behave, how uh, energy is used uh, in both transportation as well as production of electricity, how we have to reduce greenhouse gases, uh, how we have to balance out the concerns of third world countries. For example, China and India uh, are very reluctant to uh, have limits and caps on their emissions. China has just surpassed the United States in terms of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, and yet uh, they're saying, you know, we, it's now it's our turn to develop. And <laughs> if we impose too strict a rule on, um, you know, the... Um, industries and transportation and so on, it will slow down our uh, economic growth. Um, so it's a very complicated uh, problem and the reason we talk about the politics of climate change is precisely because it involves um, different opinions, it in involves interests, commercial interests, business interests, environmental interests, 
um, employment interests, uh, national interests that are in conflict with each other and for which you know, the decisions that are made on climate change will have crucial consequences. So uh, think about that as you read some of this material as well. This thing behind me here, by the way, is a mat that's made out of uh, a palm, palm tree uh, bark uh, made um, in the kingdom of Tonga uh, in the South Pacific where we were uh, several years ago on an um, extended trip uh, to check out some of the coastal zone issues and some of the reefs and, and other things. So in case you were wondering what that was, uh, it's uh, a very, very beautiful stuff that they do with, with palm bark. Um, have a nice day, have a nice week. Looking forward to kind of wrapping up the course. Um, I'm, I'm putting together an updated website with information about the international coastal uh, integrated to it that deal with the um, climate change international treat, uh, agreements and so on. And so um, keep an eye on that and I'll send you a link as soon as that's ready to go. So have a nice day. Well, now that you've um, seen the part um, of my discussion that deals with climate change, with the controversy over the IPCC uh, climate change panel, um, the hacked emails, the allegation by climate change deniers or opponents of the theory of climate change um, that um, at the time was hyped in terms of uh, scientists trying to hide the information about the reality of climate change and that human activities um, you know are not really responsible and so on um, what is the end of the story well the end of the story is that after investigations and um, assessments um, most of the allegations have been pretty much denied and and thrown out um, and universities uh, have uh, looked into whether there was any malicious intent and have found none and all of the uh, uh, climate scientists involved and so on have been let's call it exonerated and uh, found not guilty of any you know effort to distort reality but but let me also point out to you that in spite of that the discussion the political discussion by opponents of the climate change theory opponents of uh, environmental laws like cap and trade that would um, basically reduce carbon emissions and so on, are still in their blogs, in their discussions, articles, and think tanks, uh, continuing to talk about how climate change is a hoax and how the, the, the reports and the exonerations of the scientists were whitewash jobs, in other words, were cover-ups um, and universities and others just protecting themselves, and that in fact the science uh, and the evidence for climate change is not very good. So the, the, my point is, as a political scientist, it's very interesting. Uh, there is There are several realities that are at work, and uh, even though we think the story is over, uh, there are still groups that have a very strong uh, position opposed to the conclusions of climate change scientists, and they will continue to be opposed, uh, you know, regardless of the scientific evidence, regardless of the conclusions of whether there was foul play in this thing called climate gate, you know, the kind of water gate of climate science. I think it's a very good lesson for you and for me in terms of uh, the role of politics in policy making and especially in coastal policy and climate change policy, which is very important for us as, as students of uh, all of these coastal zones around the world here. Uh, thanks. I hope you find this interesting.